everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy's Sweet Life and today's video is just going to be a sit down chit chat video, kind of like my December update, but we're doing Vlogmas so you're getting a lot of day to day stuff going on in those videos. So if you haven't already noticed, I'm doing Vlogmas, I'm going to attempt it. I don't know how great it's going to go. I've never done this before. I did Vlogist one time and I think I stuck to it the whole time or very close to the whole time. So I'm going to really try to stick to it this time. I have a list of notes with me, so I might be looking down at that. But the first thing I want to talk about, the things that went on in November, two kind of big milestones happened with Olivia. She had her first solo gymnastics class. We had been going to Little Gym since she was, I don't know, like eight or nine or 10 months old up through um, just recently when we moved to this house. And she just loved Little Gym. It was great, but it's a little bit far out for us now. So we decided to join a different kid gym thing that's local to us. And she is just loving it. We went the first day and I didn't realize that it was a a child and teacher class. I thought it was a parent, child and teacher class and she flipped out. She did not want mommy to sit down and not be with her. So there was so many tears and I felt so bad. But every time I'm asking her like, do you want to quit? Do you want to go home? Um, she would say no and she would really want to stay. So she toughed it out and did great. It's just really hard for her to be away from me. And that's Partially, you know, I've been home with her this whole time. She hasn't hardly even been babysat. So it's a big transition for her to have this solo class. She can still see me the whole time, which I think is po probably part of the problem is she can see me the whole time. But there's only been a handful of times that she's been away from Johnny or me. Usually one of us is with her at all times. So it's a big step for her. And I'm really excited about that step. And that brings me to step number two. We ended up touring one preschool and almost touring another one. I got their schedule and then their pricing schedule and it was a full day thing. And we just weren't interested in that at all. I want her in just, you know, a half time thing. We ended up going with the first preschool that we toured. We just really liked it. And it became really highly recommended by a bunch of people. So I know that it's a nice preschool. And so we are on a wait list now. So as soon as they have an opening for her, she will start preschool. It's just gonna be two mornings a week. So it's a very small transition into school for her. But I really think she needs the separation and she needs the social time. I can definitely see that the social stuff is gonna be the hardest part of that. You know, the, the sharing, the taking turns. I have no doubt she'll be okay with the listening and following directions and the academic part of it. It's just the social part. And um, you know, she's a very standoffish, shy girl anyway. It's gonna definitely be a huge adjustment for her and I look forward to having her experience that because I can tell like when we're on the playground, she does watch the other kids and she does want to participate with them some of the time. And I can tell now that we're doing play dates more, she's really enjoying the social time. So I think she's just going to love going to preschool. I think it's going to be exciting because I'm going to have some free time. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with myself for that where she's actually in preschool. We ended up going to our favorite barbecue place over the weekend and they have a playground, which is really common around here. A lot of the restaurants that are more family oriented have a playground which is really nice. You can use the playground most of the year, so a lot of places have them. But anyway, we went and on the playground there was this other little girl. She was probably three and a half to four-ish and Olivia and her just started playing. They were talking to each other and um, they were taking turns really well. They were handing each other pieces of mulch and sliding them down the slide together. And they were both sitting at the top and then they would take turns doing that and it was the cutest thing. I almost just cried so many happy tears because it because it was so cute. It was the first time she was in a situation where there were complete strangers and she just made a friend. I think part of it was the other girl kind of latched onto her and Olivia went with it. And a couple of times they came down the stairs together holding hands and it was just the cutest thing ever. So I'm just thrilled that you know, she can be in those situations and start interacting with the other children. And I've seen that a lot lately. We've had a couple of play dates where she's interacted with the children a lot more. She was actually bossing one of the little boys around. That little boy's mom said he has an older brother, so he's used to being bossed around. And Olivia took right to it, was bossing him around. There's a double slide and she wanted him to slide down at the same time as her. So she's like, you sit here, I sit here. They both went down a few times like that. 
We've been in this house about two months. I have started getting to know some of the ladies here and I had a ladies night, which was a lot of fun. I can tell we're gonna have a lot of fun together and we actually are gonna do, we're gonna do one thing in December. I don't know exactly what it is. I have to look at my calendar, but we're gonna probably do one thing about every month. It's just the moms, which is lovely. <laughs> I'm really thankful that we can have some ladies nights and it's not gonna be all just play dates. So like I've said, we've been in this house for two months. I still have a lot of deep cleaning left to do. It's like every surface of the house needs to be just scrubbed and I'm working on it slowly but surely. That kind of deep cleaning process is really slow with the toddler. So it's just taking me a while to do it. I'm just working on small projects when I have windows of time. I didn't hardly do anything the last couple of weeks because we've been feeling sick. So I'm finally back into it. The last couple of days I've been working on doing some more of the deep cleaning stuff. We are getting settled in. We still have one box of picture frames and that's the only box left that we have. Um, things are starting to get organized. It's starting to feel more homey and cozy and I'm feeling more comfortable here, but it just doesn't feel right. And I don't know how else to explain it. It might just be, you know, the letdown from the other house that we had anticipated for all that time. I wanna give it time. You know, we've only been here two months. It maybe will feel like home after a while. It very well could be in another six months. It's gonna feel perfect. I do absolutely 100% love the size of this house. I love the upstairs layout with the loft space with the four rooms on the side. I'm really happy we got a five bedroom house because we have so much space and it feels open and airy and there's plenty of room for everything that we want, the drum set, the scrapbook room, his office slash man cave area. Olivia has a room, we have a guest room, and if we choose to have another child, we can definitely um, combine the scrap room and the office together and still have, you know, plenty of room for everything. I just don't really love the kitchen layout, especially, and you know, the materials that are used is totally different from the one I picked out in, you know, my dream kitchen. We definitely want to renovate the mantle over here because it's really rustic and it's just not our style at all. And the, like the, the more time goes on, the more I dislike the mantle. So it's definitely going to have to be changed. This might just be a house we live in for a few years. It might not be the what I would call like the forever home, the house we raise our child or our children in. I'm just kind of taking my time now and um, kind of letting the situation sink in a little bit more. It's, you know, it's very different from where I expected us to be at this point. There's nothing wrong with this house. It's a beautiful home. I just don't love it. <laughs> like I want to, I want that feeling of, oh my gosh, I love my house. I just don't. And I don't know if I'm ever going to feel that way about this particular house. And, and it might be the situation where we're, we're too close to the other house. It maybe has too many memories for us right now of what could have been. We're like one street over from the house that burned down. So um, that could be part of it is that we're really close to that. We can drive past that house, like going home, we can drive past that house and we're constantly kind of reminded of that. Part of it's definitely me just having to get over everything that happened. Um, so I'm still, you know, working on that. It's gonna take time. I'm hoping that we'll learn to love it and we'll grow to love it over time. I've mentioned similar sentiments before and people have left comments that, you know, over time the house that they purchased became their home and I'm just still waiting for that feeling. I am losing daylight so I've gotta talk quick, but I have been just pinning a bunch of things on Pinterest to a dream home board that I have so I can get inspiration for how we can change this house. So I've been doing a lot of that, trying to fall in love with the potential of this house. This house is really new. So part of me feels like everything is new and it's kind of a waste to just like destroy this house and change it just because I don't like the color of the granite or, you know, things like that. So part of me is like, maybe we should just sell this one, buy one that's older that we can renovate or buy one that is more in line with what we want. And so I don't have to renovate the whole house basically. I want to paint. I want to redo a bunch in the kitchen. I want to redo a bunch in the master bathroom. I want to redo the thing out here. And that's just a lot of stuff um, to do to a house that's pretty much brand new. It just doesn't sit right with me to rip out perfectly brand new good stuff. And so that's part of my thought where maybe we should just buy another one, an older one that we can do that to, or one that, you know, looks more in line with what we like. So we're just kind of toying around with it. I'm looking at Pinterest, trying to get ideas for what we could do to the house that's here. And 
uh, fix it up, but I do have that feeling like why rip out perfectly good granite just because it's not the right color. I'm definitely thinking it over a lot. I've got two more things I want to talk about. So going back to Olivia, I have started teaching her how to read. We are just in the very, very beginnings of learning how to read, but I picked up two things off of Amazon that I think are gonna help us with the process. So I got this book called Teach Your Child to Read in 100 Easy Lessons. So it's a big, huge book. Um, the lessons are long, multiple pages of different, different things that you can do. There's multiple, what they're calling them, tasks. So like, less, this lesson has 11 tasks. So we just do a couple of the tasks a day. We don't get through a full lesson a day. We're about like 40 pages in and it's really just like learning to sound out um, the letters and the words so I'll show you this page like it has the little process of you point the arrow down the word and you're you're learning to sound out each letter and so that's just something we're working on she's got a really good concept of the sounding it out thing so this book is definitely helping us along on the reading process and I think the thing that's been most effective right now are these sight word flashcards and I was totally not going to be one of those flashcard people but she she just shows so much interest in reading and words and letters and stuff that I want to, you know, encourage her to keep learning. And she's really liked these flashcards. So I feel kind of bad that I've never really introduced flashcards before because I think she would have really liked it. Um, so these ones, I bought the whole pack of these. These are sight word flashcards. This is the pre-K set. So I have sets, a bunch of sets of these. I think there's like six sets all together. There's five sets of these. So there's a bunch of different ones. Each one has, I think, 100 words. So it has two words on it. So it's got a word on each side. And she has really just got this idea. I've been keeping like the few that she knows separated out. We don't take all of these out at once, but she'll have like five or six of them out. And she'll just look at them and tell me what they are for a lot of these um, simple ones. She knows a lot of these words now. My and so like when we're reading Cat in the Hat, she can tell me some of the words. I can definitely see the sight words thing um, helping her a lot with those two and three and four letter words. So I've definitely noticed that this, is, this has been something that she's really caught on to. I also have another set of flashcards we haven't really used yet, but this is phonics. She really likes the sight words. She likes me. She likes me saying each letter and then sounding them out together and reading the words together. And it's been like a fun game for her. I think they're, you know, just pre-reading steps. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Um, it is starting to get dark. So my last thing really quick, I have one little fave for this month. We ended up making those Thanksgiving turkey crispy treats and she loved them. But we ended up getting these chocolates for the head. They're Choco Maker, Choco Maker Natural Dark Chocolate Melts just little round things and they are so good I just snack on these if I want something sweet I'll just grab a couple of these and they are delicious so we picked these up in the baking aisle of our just our regular grocery store and they're so good so I'll show you guys the the package in case you're interested it's just really good dark chocolate and it just melts in your mouth because it's the melting chocolate so I wanted to share that little um, that little fave with you guys. So I hope you guys are doing well. I will try to have a video for you guys every day until the end of the year. So I bought a ton of stuff over Black Friday all weekend through Cyber Monday and actually into Tuesday. So it was just like rapid fire purchasing things for the house. I'll probably do some sort of haul with that, but you'll see us setting up new furniture and stuff in the vlogs. I'm really excited to share that with you guys coming up. I definitely wanted to make sure we got everything we needed for the house because starting in January, we are gonna be on a super tight budget. I'm gonna run a tight ship around here. We're definitely gonna be hitting some savings goals over the next two years so that we can get this house renovated or we can move. It's gonna be really exciting, but it's also gonna mean I can't just buy everything and so it was like my one last hurrah this weekend and I'm really excited for the things that we got. I definitely hope you guys stick around. You'll be seeing some of the new furniture get set up very soon. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you can keep up with me the rest of Vlogmas and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.